Hello everyone and welcome back to the fourth AMA session for MechWarrior 5. This one was talking specifically about career and replayability options. And uh, we'll just jump straight into this one. Uh, so the first question was, will there be a New Game Plus option? Where can we restart the campaign and play it again, but keeping all previously acquired mechs? Uh, not out of the box. That is not going to be an option. Uh, they see the gameplay loop as being... Uh, of having enough time anyway. So that was that one. I'd like to know if we'll see special events like the Full Succession War and the War of 3039 pop up as events that you can participate in, locked into a specific uh, faction and fight multiple missions on a planet to help conquer or defend it. Most of the dates and planets are well documented and the source books and that type of attention will provide immense replayability. Um, this one was also, this has been hinted at before as a, as a question and uh, they, it's relatively si uh, similar answer was that the story has its own focus. Uh, major events like these will happen, but your taking contracts won't influence the outcome of those events. So, for instance, if you want to change the outcome of a specific planet changing hands, you can't do that. Uh, you can, of course, go to those locations when the events start, such as the War of 3039, but you'll just be taking missions. Uh, as part of Maybe as part of these new arcs, which I'll mention a bit further down because that comes up later, uh, but you won't be playing any major part in it. You are one of many, many fighters in such a conflict. Uh, next question. Uh, given that the game will feature a mix of story and open world missions, and given that there will be some variance in difficulty when encountering better or worse factions, what is the potential threshold for sequence breaking the game? I.e. will it be possible to get your hands on an atlas before we start running five star missions or whatever the system will be? Uh, as far as I know, this will, won't actually be able to occur because the system in game uses your reputation your reputation and mrbc ratings and that usually determines what type of missions are generated and what type of enemies you encounter so you might be able to find this the specific pattern of what you need to do uh, to increase your rep to a certain level and get maybe get your mrbc rating up by a specific time but It'll probably be a uh, it'll probably be a process where you have to keep playing and playing and playing and figuring out what's the fastest route to do it. Most people, I doubt, are going to really do that. Uh, how notorious or villainous can you get? This is a revenge story after all. Don't need to take the noble high ground. Can you accept morally wrong missions for more cash? Can your rep precede you? How likely will this affect AI and having them say retreat or flee? Uh, there won't be anything in there where you can do. Where you can become like a mustache swirling villain or something, um, you, you won't have any really effect on you or your company. It also won't really affect who hires you. You can be disliked by a faction, you can be hated, but you can still generate missions there to slowly get your rep back up. And as part of the other thing with AI retreating, no, they will not retreat. This was covered previously, and uh, it's just not something that they're planning on doing. How many endings will there be, depending on your career choice? There is only one ending. Uh, it's... The outcome and score, I guess, at the end is based on the choices you made and your Dragoon rating at the end. This can include like, how many missions you completed, uh, side missions, that kind of thing. Will there be a morality bar? Nope, there is no morality. It's not a factor. Uh, since custom loadouts will probably be the first thing modded in, will there be a legal in-game way of creating custom loadouts on your existing chassis? Something akin to MechWarrior's MechLab. Uh, with mods, yeah. But they're not looking to punish you for modifying it in that way anyway so i don't know it doesn't really seem like a, a, a valid question to be honest uh, will there be any limits to how many mechs and items you can take with you uh, there is a hard limit to how many mechs can be in the leopard uh, as in the leopard can only store x number of mechs anyway uh, you can own uh similar to battletech you can own loads of different mechs but they in the same manner will be stripped of equipment so they won't all be completely loaded up with whatever you had with them once they go into sort of a cold storage they're just the chassis and you have to put all the stuff back on uh next one in a previous ama alex said that the story goes further than the core campaign so they have more to draw from based on this i wanted to see if you would clarify that there's a core set of chronological missions and if there's a possibility that you can run into side stories or missions that fill out this narrative uh, well, there is the core set, obviously, and these do lead uh, from a narrative start uh, at the beginning of the campaign right to the timeline's end. And there are side missions, though, and these are all also handcrafted, so they're not procedural, and they do sort of expand and fla flash out the narr narrative a bit more. Sorry, tripping over words. Uh, will the game have 
In addition uh, to several diff difficulty settings, an option to choose how well off you start the game, i.e. starting as a lone wolf with a single mech versus starting with some existing reputation, like an extra mechs and lance mates. Um, one of this this sort of question comes up a few times, and basically, the the key of it it boils down to the there are the five great houses at the start, and whatever one you pick will determine the kind of mechs you find, the type of equipment that's available, and who sort of dislikes you at the start. I find that odd, to be honest, because it seems to suggest that just because your merc company sort of cropped up in, say, Kirita, that means Davian and Steiner are going to dislike you. That seems a bit random, to be honest. But yeah, essentially that's how it's going to work. Um, it, there doesn't seem to be any option to, say, give yourself a a load of money at the beginning or less cash or you've got only a locust uh, you just start as as you do with one mech and you have to grind your way up to you know uh, getting a lance together and then going out and getting bigger and better equipment uh, how will mission failure be handled in game is it basically a reload and try again or can you take the reputation hit and keep going and if you do is it possible to spiral down to being unable to continue uh, now Procedurally generation generated missions, if you fail those, yes, you take a reputation hit and any financial hit that comes with that. Um, it is possible to hit an end state, which is going bankrupt. Uh, story missions, on the other hand, you can fail as many times and retry them as many times as you want, provided you still have the finances to repair your mechs and try it again. Uh, will there be personality in the missions we drop in, or will it basically just be a drop and shoot with generic mission text each time? Uh, they have... Tr they, they've said that they've tried to flesh out the missions as much as possible with some kind of background text and uh, some fluff to give you some kind of context for the missions that you're doing and what the outcomes of those could be when you complete them. Uh, who knows how repetitive those will get by the end of it. Uh, what kind of mech warrior humour will be present again? I thought this was an odd one for a career question. Uh, they will try. They're not going to go like over the top liberal with it, but they will have little bits here and there, like referencing certain events and characters, that kind of thing. But it's not going to be overt. Uh, what's the fail state? Is it bankruptcy or player death? That's bankruptcy. Uh, how in depth will the actual physical cockpit monitor displays be? Will it be like mech warriors where they're just for show, or will they actually have important information? Uh, currently, they are the same as MWO, so it'll just be a bunch of uh, flashing images and lights and stuff, nothing really important going on there. It's also not going to be a physicalized cockpit, so it won't be like you can press any of the uh, buttons on the different monitors, that kind of thing. It's not going to be like what Star Citizen's aiming for, for instance. Um, so you may be a bit disappointed with that. However, uh, the cockpits will actually reflect certain damage states as the mech takes more and more hits. So there'll be more warning lights inside, maybe some say like uh, some venting atmosphere or uh, like the cockpit glass can get damaged, those kind of things, sparks showing, so they're, they're looking to make that feel a bit more in-depth. Uh, in a previous AMA, Russ indicated that the uh, IAM uh, may be a better way to experience co-op in MechWarrior 5. As of right now, PGI's previous statement indicated that campaign co-op only yields rewards for the player who runs it. This discourages friends from playing a new campaign, the 100% start to finish, in that there's no progression or economic benefit for the visiting players. Have they put any more thought into this, or are you just leaving it as is? Uh, the short answer to that is, they're leaving it as is. So basically, if I start the game and I invite Goober, Frunica and Davros, they'll get nothing from it. They're just taking control of some of my AI pilots and my mechs, and that's it. Uh, also, on the other side of that, if they come in, they're using my stuff they're not coming in with their equipment so if they blow up my mechs i take the financial hit for that and they don't get any punishment so yeah you have to be aware of that so for instance if, if you do have that friend varak who likes to uh mess around and break shit uh you are gonna have to be prepared to put up with that as part of the hit and i mean potentially it could be something that you might not be able to get back from uh, will there be adjustable difficulty? Uh, it doesn't have a, an easy, medium, or hard slider. Uh, it's all based on your reputation, and um, basically that's it. The higher your rep, the tougher missions can appear. It doesn't mean all of the easier missions disappear, it just means that, like Battletech, uh, more and more of, of the harder missions will be there for you. Uh, for now, any component not destroyed... Oh yeah, can, uh, sorry, can we also get a breakdown of salvaging mechanics? Uh, basically, this was quite interesting, I like this. Um, if you destroy a mech and the armor's intact, the components in that arm will be potential salvage. It, I think it goes into a kind of random 
drop table, so to speak, so uh, the items might be there, they might not be there, but the more intact the mech is when you down it, the higher the chance of getting parts off it are. Uh, also, they've gone into a little bit of detail about how contract negotiations work, so very similar to Battletech, you've got your options for basically uh, straight down the middle, more cash, more salvage, and I think maybe one for a bit more rep, and uh, they're called picks for salvage. So if you negotiate for more picks, then uh, you'll get to choose more items. But uh, items have a pick value. Uh, he mentions that a small laser might be worth one pick, while a gauss rifle might be worth ten. So we're not quite sure how much picks you're going to be able to get. Uh, while doing a co-op career with friends, will they have the ability to take their assigned mechs to the mech bay and adjust themselves, or will it be locked to the career host, and will gear be in a global pool or doled out by the career leader, if that's the case? Uh, they said that any gear that you earn stays with the host, so if, say, if Gubu headshots some really awesome mech, I just get the mech, he doesn't get any of that. Uh, modifying the builds, I think... That is, from what they've been talking about, uh, it's, it is down to whatever the host sets it to. Uh, will the single player and co-op campaign be at least as long or as have as much content as previous titles? Uh, this they haven't quite nailed down as far as the length of the story goes, how long it would take an average person to complete. Uh, they did mention that the fact that this is a more open-ended game compared to previous Mech Warriors, i.e. you've got a fairly large chunk of the Inner Sphere to travel around, it may mean that you get a much longer experience in the sense of trying to poke mech it, getting every mech, getting all the weapons kind of thing. Uh, but as far as the actual narrative is concerned, they haven't quite nailed that down yet. Uh, where will it take place, uh, as in how much of the Inner Sphere? Um, no clan space, no deep periphery. The great houses of the Innisphere. I'm not even sure if we'll be going into the sort of edge of the periphery, so I don't know if sadly we'll be able to travel around uh, places like the Marian Hegemony or the Outworld Alliance, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I kind of hope they do, but it, this might be a job for modders. Uh, do you have the choice to go rogue and betray a client and then say capture the supply convoy that you're escorting instead of getting it to the nav point? Uh, no. That's not a mechanic that they're getting in yet, although they are looking at doing it. Uh, so maybe we'll see it by the time the game comes out. Uh, in addition to career mode, will there be instant action? Well, we already know there is. And yes, you can. You can generate your emissions, and they are all fully cooperative. Uh, is there a difficulty progression in, in mechs as the game goes on? Like, can I run into a banshee really early, or am I just going to run into lights and mediums initially? Uh, although they're still trying to work on the balance, you will gradually progress to encountering bigger and, and tougher enemies uh, with better opportunities to uh, salvage those uh, mechs. Um, they also don't want it to be a case where you decide to take a tougher contract based on your rating and you get stomped, so they're still working on how mechs will appear for that. I imagine that's going to be one of those cases where you still get outliers and you, you are going to get stomped and others are just going to be really easy. Um, uh, they also talked about uh, rarity tables generating equipment as the timeline progresses, and newer variants of mechs will appear in certain sectors based on where they were constructed. Uh, Cataphrax is an example, so you'll probably only find it in Lao space originally, and then you may find some in Davian space not long after, given a load of them were captured after the territory was taken. And the map obviously also changes based on uh, significant events, uh, one of those being uh, the FRR coming into existence. Uh, so we have access to basically everything by the end of the game, but will the choices you make as a player lock you out of specific tech and chassis? Uh, no, you will be able to acquire everything, it just depending on where some of those things are will make it more or less difficult for you uh, overall. Um, can you go over how loot will progress? Uh, which is to say, how do you imagine the looting progressing over the course of a career? For instance, I imagine using negotiation to be able to get three or four guns, and by the end game having enough influence to pick and choose entirely undamaged mechs. Uh, indeed, you will be able to do this. Apparently, the higher your rep, uh, the more um, weight you have in the negotiations with contractors, and so you'll be able to uh, basically dictate whether you want to have the option of taking that entire atlas that you just salvaged via a headshot uh, or whether you want to be able to have first choice at say some star league tech that kind of thing so yeah that's uh, something you can aim for are all missions leveled to the player based on their story progression or can you go back to starting areas and basically crush pirates with a four annihilator lance uh, the answer to this was uh, another interesting one, is that you can go back and do really early missions, but they've sort of 
locked it. So as you go up the progression level, let's say, if you start taking missions that are 20 or 30 points below your current level, you won't get any reputation increase. You can do them, of course, and you will fight weaker enemies and crush them. So that is that is an option. You can do that if you want, but you won't get any reputation increase and the timeline will still continue. So I guess the balance there is that you will really want to keep progressing upwards so you have access <clears throat> by the time those bigger and better mechs with better equipment turn up, you're equipped to handle them. Uh, someone asked, like, I've got 2.5 trillion C bills in Mech Warrior Online. Are they going to be able to? Are there going to be monetary limits or income limits? Uh, no, apparently they already have a system to handle such a large integer values. Uh, will contracts we take as mercs interact with contracts? With what contracts and enemies uh, we make later in the game? Basically, can it uh, interfere with or, or change those? Uh, your standing with particular groups will influence what contracts and the rewards will be. If a faction dislikes you you will get paid less, you have less options for um, salvage, that kind of thing. Also, if you're in, a, if you're in say, Curita space and they hate your group, you won't be able to buy stuff from their stores, because you, you, you're blacklisted until you get your rep back up with them. Uh, I assume actions against factions and mercenary loops won't affect the storyline. Um, the story doesn't take a hit based on your rep. Uh, the story is isolated as well from the faction. So again, if there's a story mission, that is in, say again with this example, you're in Curita space and they hate you. If a story mission is taking you there and you're working for the Drax, you, you just will. Uh, so, so it doesn't stop the story mode from continuing. Uh, will career mode provide gameplay benefits to choosing a lighter set of mechs versus a heavier set, i.e. Uh, drop costs, maintenance delays for future missions? Um, Missions, I don't. It doesn't sound like missions will have a, a drop tonnage limit, uh, and I don't think there'll be any bonuses for those kind of uh, take purposely taking lighter mechs. But at the same time, there will be certain factors, uh, f uh, cost factors to take into account, and they don't just want you dropping with four assault mechs for every mission. So I'm getting the idea that some missions may require you to take lighter, faster mechs because there may be they may be time sensitive. Uh, there may be something in here that prevents you. There might just be an arbitrary, like, you can't take assaults, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, does the main story for a linear progression, or is there, like, a branching tree? It's entirely linear. Uh, will, the cam will there be campaign DLC, like, extra stories, that kind of thing? Uh, they said it's too early to say specifically, but they are making DLC. Uh, will MechWarrior 5 gameplay lean more towards a sim-like experience in earlier versions, or will it be more arcade-like, like in MechWarrior 4? Uh, this has been asked in the past, and the answer to that one was it's going to play more like MechWarrior Online in the sense that the movements will still be a little more arcade-like, but they want things to feel like... Because there's no... Uh, you can't mess with the engines, for instance, so if a mech moves at a certain speed, uh, it'll feel like it's that slow, stompy assault mech that runs at 40-odd kph, while the faster mechs actually feel like they have that agility. So it's kind of an artificial way of suggesting that there's that kind of sim-like movement, but essentially it's going to play like MechWarrior Online, so if you don't like that, you're not going to like this element. Uh, will we start with a full lance? Uh, no, actually. Uh, you don't start with a full lance, which means you can't play the campaign co-op uh, with four players straight off. You do actually have to grind a bit and get the f your extra three mechs before you can do that. Uh, can you lose the campaign missions and still continue? Will you be forced to retry and restart them? Uh, yes, uh, and you can actually replay the story missions if you want. Uh, will there be mission chains? And this is what I was talking about er uh, earlier up in the question list. Um, basically, they call them arcs, and similar to, say, well, similar-ish to flashpoints, but the idea is supposed to be that you take the first contract and then there's uh, subsequent missions afterwards so you get like extended contracts basically that have multiple missions and depending on uh, success or failure they will actually divert to a different type of mission uh, i think if you screw up the first one i don't f you might get second one but if you screw that one i don't think it'll do the third one in the chain for instance so uh, i think you got a bit of leeway with losses in these but that's an interesting one i like the sound of that Will there be Sally Gear or weaponry? Yes, of course there will. Uh, especially if you're going to bring in mechs like the Night Star, for instance, that thing comes with Gauss rifles. Uh, how much of a leap in difficulty will there be between different rated missions, say a 2 to a 3 star, or however they're going to do it? Uh, they're still tuning this, so no direct answer. Uh, story mission difficulty is balanced based on the point in the timeline, your rep, and what they expect your average player to have equipment-wise at that point. 
Uh, will we have unique variants of mechs, or, or like sort of hero mechs, so to speak? Um, they do have some special events that are uh, variants, sorry, that will be available uh, in special locations, certain stores, I think. Uh, these are based on certain actions or events, that kind of thing. How much of the campaign will affect the overall the battle tech? Since we're a small company uh, that has its own secluded story, will we be playing as part of the greatest story in the universe? Uh, again, this comes back to the thing: you're just one in a one in a million mercenary groups all flying around the the inner sphere. So you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be mass affecting this where you're going to change the course of the storyline. You you're not going to be like somebody who kills some fucking head of a, of a great house or something. You're just a bunch of scrub mercs trying to get trying to get along and not die. Um, so that's about it, really. Uh, the, however, the story has been written with Randall Bills, so it will fit into the Battletech narrative, it won't break anything, so it's not going to come across like a kind of uh, fan fiction type thing. They say, hope, they're hoping it'll be canonized. Uh, not not like in a religious way. Uh, could you buy out other Merc units uh, and then absorb what's left of their company? Uh, no. In fact, they oddly enough, they said there are no other Merc outfits that exist as random elements to encounter. Which uh, seems like a shame. I would like procedural generation missions that have me going up against other either randomly generated merc companies uh, or even famous ones. Why not? I mean, I'm not killing the leaders of them, so why can't I? Uh, will any of the missions be like treasure hunter exploration missions? These are planned, but not in the game yet, so that's interesting. Uh, although the story does have a kind of treasure hunt vibe, so probably some Lost Star League stuff. Uh, will the level of fame and success in missions be recognised further down the road in the story and missions? Uh, well, yes, we've already covered that. Um, your reputation will allow you a better negotiation um, sort of leverage at the start. Uh, will there be remarks about this and compared to you in one playthrough, you're only successful at 50% of the contracts? Uh, I don't think any of the NPCs will remark upon your uh, amazing skills as a mech warrior. Uh, will you have vendettas from other mech warriors? Uh, no. Although they did like the idea of a nemesis system and they did discuss it, uh, it did not make the cut. Uh, will travelling be between systems be more immersive than HBS's dropship Glam Cam? Ooh, shade being thrown there. Uh, they are developing it as they speak in that AMA, so they hope we'll like it, but no details, sadly. Uh, will we have randomised mech warriors like we do in Battletech, or specified like in Mech Warrior 4 Mercs? And if they are randomised, will they have some kind of personality so that we have another crew in every playthrough? Uh, there apparently will be a set of handcrafted pilots that have unique voices and uh, personalities, and they will interact with one another at uh, certain times during missions with exchanging dialogue, that kind of thing. Uh, the random pilots will be obviously less sort of fleshed out, but they will have their own archetypal personalities, so rookie, you know, arrogant type, uh, a hotshot, and all this kind of thing. Uh, and they will sometimes interact with each other, but not as much as the handcrafted pilots. Uh, the, also, the unique ones that you can find will, some you will encounter during the story that you can then hire on, others may be ones that you will find on certain worlds uh, waiting to be picked up, basically. Uh, there's a question about Solaris, and will we be able to go there, take part in the competitions, and say watch battles? Uh, no. Although you can visit the Solaris system, you can't go to the game world. Uh, it's I, I would agree with them on this. Solaris is almost a different game type in and of itself. Like, almost a separate mini-game. Um, speaking about Alex's and Dave's answer about rarity table and filtration rarity, are you planning to have some kind of in-game news source to let you know what's going on and where? Uh, yes, apparently there's going to be a ticker that will keep you up to date with current news and events in the Innersphere and uh, different lore developments, and apparently this star map will have several filters that will help you find specific items you might be looking for, say, uh, new mechs being available, uh, entirely new mechs, I mean, not just variants, uh, or new equipment being available, uh, certain events happening, such as, you know, uh, say, going back to the War of 3039, so you can see specifically where they are, and you can travel there and obviously take contracts. Uh, there was a question about pilot progression. Now, if you didn't hear in the previous AMA, uh, basically uh, the AI pilots you have in your company will increase in their skill based on every action they do. It's incremental. So firing a medium laser, they get better very slowly with medium lasers. Uh, piloting certain mechs, they get better at piloting certain you know specific weight class of mechs, etc., etc. So it's more of an iterative thing. The longer they're alive, the more missions they take part in, the better they get overall. 
Uh, what events progress the timeline? Does it progress after missions or traveling between star systems? Essentially, uh, time. Uh, so repairing, traveling, uh, taking part in contracts, those kind of things will advance the timeline. Uh, time uh, will march on regardless. Uh, about variants, will there be more available variants than currently in MWO, and uh, will there be other mechs based on certain chassis or a direct upgrades or side grades of those? Uh, they're using MWO's list as a base. Anything beyond that will be a special case that they, if they've got time, they'll try to add in. But since MechWarrior Online already has a pretty decent number of variants, those will be the ones that will be in the game at launch. Uh, will there be cutscenes at certain points in the story? Uh, no, there won't be any cutscenes. Uh, but they will have the news stuff to keep players informed. Uh, so no, you're not going to get some kind of grand 40k type uh, cutscene thing like um, Relic did for Dawn of War, for instance. Uh, do my characters have a backstory and ethnicity, and does that kind of what kind of uh, does that affect what kind of factions are against me, and what type of contracts I get? Um, this question didn't really answer. The answer didn't really fit the question. Basically, it just said where you start will affect who likes you and who dislikes you. And that was it, really. There wasn't. I, I think the question there was whether y certain options you might pick as a character creation will affect that, but it doesn't really sound like there will be any character creation. Or like, where Battletech, where you had the option of saying you were a Torian noble who ended up uh, becoming a guard for a merchant caravan kind of thing, uh, I don't think we're going to even have that. Uh, will failing a mission lead to a different mission instead, causing you to replay the previous mission? Uh, the arc system will adjust for failure, and what missions will appear next? Um... Uh, are the highest level difficulty missions actually that high uh, difficulty incur heavy losses and so if you lose will those lance mates lose the equipment um, yes and you will incur all of those finances um, financial impacts yourself so again if you have friends who join your corp and they get a mech blown to shit it's going to cost you not them will lance mates backstory have an impact on the story uh, no the story is entirely focused on you the player uh, the mercenary random generations thing sounds good, but it sounds like it could also allow players to create personalised mercs that could serve as avatars. This is one that I, I don't think they understood the question. I think what he was asking was, will friends, when, when your friends join the game, will they be able to basically pick an avatar uh, for their pilot when they're in your campaign? And I think the answer to that was no. I, I think essentially if someone jumps into, say, player slot 2, whatever pilot you have there, that's who they are. Um, so their name might switch to, say, Gooba Gabba, but it could just be like a female pilot, because that's just who was in, in the mech at the time when you uh, when you went into the mission, or when you loaded your save. So I don't think you'll be able to have custom um, avatars for when you play multiplayer. Will there be unlockable goodies to grind for? Uh, no. Outside of grinding for more max. Uh, are there hidden endings? No. Uh, will in-universe events impact your personal reputation? Say there are prejudices arising because Fed Sons do something uh, bad to the Combine, and if you're Davian, would uh, Draconis factions have a bias against you? Uh, well, as far if you start in Davian, they'll hate you, but as far as character background, no. Not really. Uh, talking about co-op Lance members, what happens if one of our Lance members purposely destroy your mechs? Uh, uh, or will it only be limited to friends and groups? Uh, there is no random system, so you don't have to worry about having an open game that three rando people can join and then they start fucking up your game. Uh, it is just going to be whoever you invite personally from your friends list on Steam. Or who knows by this time, maybe the Epic Store, who knows. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's just that. So it's just, if one of your friends just decides to dick, dick about, it's it's just them dicking about. It's, it's not like random people can do that. Poss Russ did say they might possibly look into adding that as a feature in the future. If, if you know, you're a sado and you haven't got three mates who can join you or a couple of friends, uh, you can have a random person join you, but uh, not at launch. Uh, can your unit become a loyalist? No. Uh, you can max a rep with a faction where they like you and, and they might give you certain discounts, but you can't become a full-on sort of loyalist with like special stores, that kind of thing. Uh, is Comstar there? And can we work for them? Um, just the great houses who we can work for. I don't know if that means Comstar is there in the sense that you can see them on the map. Um, so no idea. If your buddy dies in co-op, do you lose the pilot in solo? Uh, yes. So if the pilot that your friend was controlling dies, then he's gone. 
unfortunately. Uh, can we save scum? Yes, you can. Uh, so reload your save game uh, if you failed a mission uh, so you don't incur the losses, you can do that. Can we turn off the hood for screenies? Yes, indeed we can. Woo! Uh, is a battle armor? No. Can you die, as in your pilot uh, die if your mech is destroyed? No, but you do take the financial hit. And the last question uh, was, can you just spend time looking at your mechs in the bay? Yes. You can look at them before missions, uh, before you take a mission. You just wander around the mech bay and look at them, go up and down the different uh, lifts onto the gangways and, and look at mechs at different angles. And after missions, you can see them coming back all, like, you know, all the holes and smoking sections and missing limbs and seeing the techs work on them. So, yeah, you can do that. You can obviously use that as screensaver, I guess, and wallpaper engine, that kind of thing, I guess, if you know how to make it. And uh, that's that. That is uh, AMA session four, just on 30 minutes. So, as always, thanks everyone for joining. Remember, if you uh, have the uh, the time free, you can always check out the one that's uh, the same day. Um, that's at 6 p.m. Um, North American time. I guess that you have to work that out your based on where you are in the states. But I think they're on the East Coast, so I think you have to go by that. Uh, so yeah. Um, Thanks everyone for joining, uh, hope you have a good week and I will uh, see you next time, bye!